All right, hopefully it's going. It's not giving me the uh, clock on my end. One sec. Maybe someone has to show up before <laughs> before it goes. All right, I'm just going to roll with it. What's going on, everybody? I am going to do a live video tonight to kind of uh, show off some of my relics that I have in the collection. Um, did get this in today, which is kind of why I decided to do this video. What's going on, everybody? What's up, Mike? Mike, uh, BC Gaming. So I got this one of one uh, triple threads relic in today. So I decided that it had been requested of me a couple of times. Oh, I think the stream is now just starting. Whoops. Um, <laughs> I thought I would just go ahead and show off all the relics I have. So uh, how I have them sorted is I have uh, four drawers in my uh, penthouse box. Two of them are for top loader relics, two of them are for magnetics, and then I have a couple of loose ones that I display. So this is anything that is uh, not in a, uh, not a autograph. Those are separate. So I've been asked to do this a couple of times. Uh, so why not go ahead and do it? So what's up, Gary? What's up, Andy? <laughs> Hello, Mike. I'm glad we got uh, people competing for the number one fan spot, huh? All right, we'll kick it off with a little leather and lumber here from Don Ross, just a standard bat relic. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the uh, the cooler ones first because I know if anybody's watching this on replay, they like to see the good stuff first. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, here is here's the two that I have uh, on display at all times. I know that Mike, who's in the room right now, will... Be very familiar with this one since he has this card as well. This is the 2011 Triple Threads Dinger Kings booklet. Uh, these are one per master box or master case, excuse me. So an 18 box case, you get one booklet. Uh, generally, you're hoping for an autograph one, but if you're going to get a relic one, you want to get a really cool one like this. So it's got Joey Bats on it. Of course, you got Miggy. You have Josh Hamilton, Pujols, Vado, and Cargo. So my opinion, th three future Hall of Famers on there. You can probably guess which of those I consider uh, future Hall of Famers. And then I'm going to count this one as well. Um, this is what I would consider a manufactured relic. It's the 2012 Golden Moments 24 Karat Gold Infused one of one. So there you have it on those. All right, let's go into the magnetics here. Magnetic relics, and we'll kind of breeze for uh, past some of the uh, the lower end ones later on. So first up is this. Yeah, everybody in the room has the same name. Uh, 2001 Bowman Draft Futures Game Game Worn Jersey. So they used to do these in Bowman Draft every year, where they would do these uh, these relic cards. I believe he has one in 2002 as well, but it could be wrong. But I do have this one from 2001. I thought that was worthy of uh, getting a spot in the magnetic. This one I didn't get all that long ago. Uh, Prime Cuts 2005. This is uh, kind of like a blue hollow foil. Yeah, 06. Any of those early triple threads, I guess, for that matter, is pretty pricey, um, especially on eBay right now. The asking prices are ridiculous. So this one's number to 10, kind of a cool little dual relic there. Speaking of triple threads, here we go. Uh, this one is numbered six of nine. I know that might elicit a few chuckles out there. This is uh, 119 RBI is what it spells out here. I love triple threads relics. So you'll see a couple of those here tonight because I thought, well, they're cool. And if they're at the right price, I will pick them up every time. Speaking of which, here is one that spells out Power Corner. It's got Mark Teixeira and Justin Morneau. So this is from 2010. If you're thinking about solid first baseman in 2010, these are probably the guys who are going to come to mind on, uh, I guess, for the American League side. What's going on, Rick? Uh, he does, Gary. He has one in the uh, 
2000 Topps Traded. That was probably the best card I own. <clears throat> I own. It's the uh, kind of the Holy Grail Cabrera card. All right, next up we have a 2012 Topps, a cut above die cut. And these are really tough. So these flagship ones that are numbered out of 50, just because most of the time you're gonna if you're gonna pull these out of the hobby box, you're gonna get one of those crappy two dollar relics. So to get one that's uh, a little bit higher number, no, actually numbered in the first place, to get one that's you know lower numbered like this one, it's not always that easy. Um, so it's it's one that doesn't pop up too often. A bit of an underrated card, I would say. Here is kind of the same thing here, 2012 Tops Career Day. A lot of these have a base insert with them too. So you see a relic of your player, you're not much of a relic guy. You can always go ahead and get a base version as well. This next one is by far and away uh, one of my favorites. This is definitely a top five relic in the collection, and it's the Miggy Mash Orange. I need to show this card off more often. Uh, this one is numbered to 25. It is the, he said it's the orange parallel, which orange always goes well with the Tigers, although it's not exactly my favorite color. It works well with the Tigers, still. You did, Mike. I, I think anybody who was at the National that year got, pretty much got to hold that card. Um, well, that's what happens when you drop Bitcoin 45 minutes in. Um, next time I'm going to try not to do that, hopefully. I can <laughs> spend my money around a little bit more, but when your Holy Grail card pops up, sometimes you just got to do it. Here's a cool one as well. This is the Blockbusters uh, manufactured hat patch. So these were the ones you got out of 2012 Tops Update Jumbo Boxes. You can see the Tiger's D on there. My favorite version of that logo. I don't really like the uh, <clears throat> thicker one. So I remember exactly when I found out about the Cabrera trade. So I, I really think those are cool. I actually lost the autograph version of that not that long ago. Kind of bummed me out. And this is the uh, Jumbo Relic. This is in the shape of home plate. Normally they're like, well, they're actually like that size right there. Um, and this one's the Jumbo one. It's numbered out of 20. A small little crease here in the patch window, which kind of sucks, but these just don't pop up. I have not, Eric. Uh, it is not a relic card, so it is uh, it is not going to be in this video today, unfortunately. This one uh, is actually one of the very first, I guess, higher-end cards, you could say. It was pretty high-end for me at the time, um, and it, it probably would fetch a pretty penny right now if you were to put it on the secondary market, at least $25, I would think, <clears throat> just because they don't ever pop up, uh, and they weren't ever guaranteed. <clears throat> but this is a 2013 Bowman Platinum, number to 50. We have the St. Patrick's Day Relic, and I actually traded a Mike Trout version of this card um, for that one there. So I definitely lost the trade in terms of value, but it's for the PC. <clears throat> now these are uh, these are pretty sweet here. This is the triple threads, or not, excuse me, the triple crown relic set from 2013 Top Series 1. An incredibly difficult set to put together. Um, some of the more hardcore people will try to get it where the relic matches the jersey so in this case it's a road jersey in the picture so you want a uh road um swatch here mine is pretty inconsistent with it i think like half of mine match uh but it's just so hard to find these you're you got to take what you can get so i have the complete set um each one commemorates one of his uh moments on his chase to the triple crown I see a few comments here. I'll catch up on those in a minute. Um, these came in as redemptions in packs, actually, too. So you didn't get these directly in the packs, which only adds to their scarcity now. 2013 tops, besides from the fact that it was flagship, uh, there's just not too many of them out there. So this is actually one that I pulled myself and redeemed myself. So that's number four in the set. Uh, Rick, so what I do is I have this thing that's called the penthouse box, and I did a video on it a long time ago. 
I might have to do an update video on it. And that's where I keep the relics right now. The only ones that I have out on display are that 24 karat gold one and the uh, the booklet card, just because they are, number one, pretty sweet. <laughs> number two, they don't necessarily uh, fit very well in any of the uh, forms of storage that I have at my disposal. See, he's got nice shine on them there. That's uh, number six. There should be a longer video, um, which is why I wanted to do it live, because I figured there would be at least one person here to kind of keep me company. So here's uh, number seven there, number eight, number nine, very similar poses on one of these, and number 10. So you can see these all match here. There's just a couple of mine that don't match, um, but it's really not a big deal. Nice to have the complete set. I was very uh, thrilled to complete that. Here's a If It Ain't Immaculate, It Ain't Me Clubhouse Collection, little relic swatch there, number 249. Here's one that I got at one of the last card shows, kind of before the pandemic hit. Dual um, piece of memorabilia here from Immaculate. You got the patch up top, and then it's got it's like a weird like vinyl type material. Hey, what's going on, Jesse? He said, I'm going to be uh, probably really far behind on comments, so apologies in advance. I almost actually just skipped over one of the best cards uh, in this whole thing. That would not have been good. Um, 2014 Tops, the only one that's in a uh, magnetic right now. I've had this one for quite some time, too. It's got a yellow jersey on it. I believe this is from the World Baseball Classic in 2013 Venezuela jersey, which they've been known to use some of those before. Um, that's why I guess that, but I'm not 100% sure. Here's one of the lowest number ones I have. This is the blue frame. I believe it's blue. It might be black. I can't tell. This one is a one of one. And, uh, it was in a slab when I got it. I cracked it out because it was in a really obnoxious, huge PSA slab, and I just I didn't want a slab that was that big. Uh, here's the Gold Hollow NT. This is from the uh, this is either from the Detroit Stars, which is the Negro Leagues um, tribute jerseys that the Tigers will wear, or this is from uh, the 2014 All Star Game in Minnesota. It's one of the two. Um, I would guess it's the Detroit Stars jersey because Panini did a lot of those at that time, or they uh, kind of they must have got one of those to cut up. Now, what would be really helpful in identifying it is if you had one of these on them. This is a 2016 tribute stamp of approval. It's got the uh, see the MLB cert on there, so you can go look up and see what game this is from, which is really cool. It's something that I wish they did more of, uh, but I understand that it's probably – Kind of costly to do that. I need to put like a post it note in here so I don't lose my place. There we go. Uh, some more manufactured stuff here 500 Home Run Futures Club 2016 update. This is pretty nice um, for the triple, or excuse me, the museum collection, primary pieces. So it's supposed to be a quad relic swatch. These are actually all four patches. So it's probably one of the nicer ones out of 99 that you'll find from this particular card. That is a 2017. Ah, uh, it is black framed, you're right. I'm gonna have to check that in my spreadsheet. Mike was actually um, present when I got this one here. This is a 2017 Gold parallel from Triple Threads. Team Venezuela. Uh, this was a year of the World Baseball Classic, the most recent one. They did a few different relics for it. He's got a few different ones in there. So I like this one. I think the Venezuela colors, the red, yellow, and blue primary colors look really nice. So I do try to pick up some of his Venezuela stuff from time to time, even though I have really no affiliation with the country, um, aside from being a Miggy fan. This is the greatness uh, relic, a little subset here. 
numbered at 299. What's going on, Collecting Kutch? Fantastic Twitter follow. Um, if any of you guys are on the Twitter, check them out. If you guys, uh, you guys are on the Twitter and you like my super collection, you're going to love his. Oh, that's awesome, Jesse. Uh, here's the Players Weekend Manufactured Patch. I think these were, uh, this was 2018 Series 1. You know, those out of those blasters. I don't even remember when I got that one. It's been a long time. There's another one with the uh, sticker on it. This is a uh, game where I actually hit a home run against the Indians, I believe. Number to 50 from a definitive collection. I gotta say, I've been kind of a, on a relic kick lately. I've been looking at quite a few of them. Um, I go through little spans where I kind of get heavy into the relics. Here is a uh, Jackie Robinson manufactured one. This is from 2018 Update Blasters. So that's the little commemorative one you get out of those. Been out bid on a couple of parallels of that one. I do like that design. This one is pretty nice. Flawless Emerald Parallel, numbered out of three. It's an eBay one of one because uh, it's the only one that's actually not a eBay one of one because the upper two are one of three and three of three, so that technically makes it an eBay one of one. I'm just making stuff up at this point. Um, you should. Uh, I would love to see it because what you show off on your Twitter feed is uh, is great. Please, uh, you'll have to let me know if you do it too, so I can mention it. Because I know that a lot of people who follow like these types of videos like to see the super collection stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm telling you guys, if you if you like my super collection, you're going to be blown away. When you see collecting Kutch's McCutcheon collection, it is insane. Um, here is the medallion. This is uh, from Series 2, the Golden Anniversary Silhouetted Batter Patch. I did a video on this one before. It goes, oh, there it goes. I knew the clock would make an appearance at some point. Um, this is the 150 stamp. The base was actually the last one I had to get uh, in my pursuit of the rainbow. It was a lot tougher than you would think to find a base version for under $10. Here's the gold. This is numbered out of 50. Here's the red out of 25. It does need a new one touch. I'm going to have to fix that. Someone actually just sent me a... Uh, that card as a gift to the other day. So now I have two of those. On um, the group that I'm in, Gary, it's uh, the Super Collectors Unite group on Facebook that Dustin Abraham does. He has it at 250 or more. Um, but I really, I think if you have one card, you could be a Super Collector if you really wanted to. You gotta start somewhere. And then here is the uh, the Platinum. So that is the first drawer. There are four of them, uh, but it will go a little bit faster because the next one is barely full. Yeah. <laughs> See, the view count goes up as soon as the clock goes off. I noticed that. I don't think I'm not paying attention. What's up, Alex? Yeah, I'm telling you guys, it's uh, it is one of the, the most crazy, cool super collections out there. Uh, he's got, he seems to have a, a one of one for any, like any, if I have this card right here and I show it off, he's probably got it too. It's, uh, it's awesome. And I, I love McCutcheon as well. I should try that, Rick. I should, uh, if I bought up enough of those cheap jerseys, I could probably make one. Here is a definitive collection 2019. Uh, B-Roth actually picked this up for me at, a uh, what was it? So whatever that New York show is, I think it was White Plains or something. So he said a, a dealer had this, and he uh, he worked on a deal for me while I was actually at a show. Uh, I appreciate it, Jesse. Thank you. So shout out to him on that one. Um, Clubhouse Collection Dual Relic. This one is probably a little bit more expensive than you might think. These Cabrera K-Line Duels 
I've been after a few of them. Uh, this is the only one I have so far. It's numbered to 70. Here is uh, the Meaningful Material patch from this year's museum collection. Copper parallel to 35. Yeah, if you could reply, uh, yeah, send me a reply tweet so I can, so I can see or tag me in a tweet. I had a feeling that you had one. Um, here is the uh, Ray de Venezuela, number to nine. So King of Venezuela. You guys didn't know I knew Spanish, did you? That is the gold. And then the only uh, 2021 to make it in there so far would be the rookie medallion uh, from Series 1 Blasters. I do too. There's uh, there's actually one where he's with Prince Fielder and K-Line. It's 2013 Heritage, I think. And that's uh, that one's awesome as well. I would like to get my hands on that. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely one of my favorites. All right, these I'm going to go through a little bit quicker. Um, these are the top-loaded ones, so these are mostly lower-end relics, but there's a few in here that have some really cool designs, in my opinion, uh, but they just weren't pricey enough to get the one-touch treatment. Otherwise, that would be broke because that would be a lot of one-touches. So we did this one. Uh, this is the national patch time. These are in order by year as well. Got standouts from Fleer Tradition. Here's a cool one here. This is the uh, Donruss Threads. And it's numbered up to 25 on the back. Got a little pinstripe there from the Marlins jerseys they wore back during that time. Little tools of the trade here. Get a bat and a jersey. Uh, take me out to the ball game relic. A little mini from Cracker Jack. Actually, just picked up the base Cabrera from that product. Um, it was last week. I did not have it yet. A little sweet spot for you, 2004. Here's a hitting machines from Fleer Ultra, pinstripe right down the middle. Got a dress code uh, from Classics. So, a lot of these I've just picked up on COMC during uh, some of the promotions. Like this one's number to 100 here. Basically, if it's under uh, like four bucks, I'll take a really strong look at it. Try to get a yeah. It's it's weird, Alex. You got to get a you have to like click the little dots or something, and then like hit go to channel. It's uh yeah, you're right, Gary. There is a there is not much going on in the one touch market, especially with the Shore Griffey card. I've got a nice stack of them over here, but when I run out, it might be a uh, it might be kind of scary. Uh, here's one with Roy Oswalt, Oswalt jersey. It's a face to face. I love this. Uh, it says nice shine on it here. A lot of these two valid mid two thousands ones. Here's a really cool passing the torch from Elite Gold. Love the foil action on that one. That one's numbered to two fifty. You'd think that one would be a little bit lower numbered. And then a little Fleer Authentics. If you guys like these uh, live streams, be happy to do more of them. I think this is fun um, to kind of do it this way. I'd like to do more rummage videos, but it gets kind of lonely. I'm doing it by myself, um, just recording it. So I like doing it this way. This one, uh, I don't know why. This one just reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones. Diamond Dominators. It's got, a, it's got some material on it too i don't know what it is i never checked it out but it's all sleeved up now so i'm not going to oh it is i'm gonna need to check that out i haven't been on a live stream in a hot second so i need to uh no i haven't been trying to access a channel here's a swing time this is numbered to 610 so that's uh, one of the Stranger ones in terms of numbering in the collection. Whoops. Wouldn't be a stream if I didn't bump the camera. A little prestige here, 2005. Back when they had relics in Tops Gallery. 
OG Tops Gallery here. Here's a uh, Marquee Attractions in the shape of an M. They used to have a lot of these uh, die-cut ones that were a little bit strange. Here's the Old Judge from Origins Baseball. There's actually an autograph of this that popped up not too long ago that's pretty cheap. I would like to add that at some point. Um, these Old Judge ones, I think, are a pretty cool design. Origins was a fun little product back in the day. It's another uh, sweet spot. This one is numbered at 275. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, I don't even remember where I got that one at. I think that was a COMC one too, but I, it was probably bunched in a lot of cards where I didn't get a chance to pay it enough attention, which is one of the downsides of like the COMC orders. Like I like to be able to get a hundred cards in at a time because it's cool to get to go through and catalog all of them and look at each of them. Um, but yeah. Uh, Jeff, that is to be determined. I'm not 100% sure yet. I didn't know that it was uh, on actually until just now. So I'm, I'm going to have to take a look and see if I'm going to be able to go or not. Uh, probably not because I have to get the PSA submission to get. Oh, actually, no. The PSA submission is next weekend. I don't know. I'll have to check the calendar. Maybe. Um, here's a bazooka relic. Here's a nice one here, Bowman Sterling. I think that's actually the base card in that set. Uh, this is one of my favorite types of relics to chase, the all-star stitches or all-star swatches, if I think they call them now. So this one's in the shape of 06 because it's from 06. This was at PNC Park. Shout out to Bob Lewis. This one kind of has like a uh, concert poster vibe to it with the thick outline around them and the kind of cartoonish in the background. I like it a lot. I think it's a cool looking design. That's kind of my uh, my style of art right there. This one was a, uh, a gift from my friend Wayne who watches the channel. So thank you, Wayne, again for this one. It's the Silver Limited from UD Artifacts, another product that I used to really like back in the day. Yeah, the cataloging can be a pain, uh, but I, I love it. Sometimes if I get like 100 cards in a day and I know I want to get through all of them all at once, then, I, uh, then, it, then it might become a pain. I know Mike uh, greatly enjoys cataloging. That's probably his favorite activity in the hobby. Uh, here's 2007 Topps Allen & Ginter mini frame relic. I'm not sure what this is. It, it looks – I think it's just me. I'm, I have some troubles with uh, differentiating colors, so it looks kind of like a – I don't know what you even call it, like a light blue or something, but I think it's actually a gray jersey. But that one always uh, trips me out. Depends on how I look at it. There's a turkey red. From when turkey red was a standalone product. Try not to get the glare on these. This was a recent addition. Uh, this is the Ultimate Ensemble Swatches 2 Electric Boogaloo. Number to 75 with Vladdy Sr. on it. So it's always cool to add a Hall of Famer to go alongside them. This is the Ultimate Star, also from Ultimate Collection. This card right here is, is just pretty much a meme. Game faces, or faces of the game, I should say. There's one that's also called Game Faces of this pose, but you see this face, and uh, you just know he's up to no good. Here's a Fleer Ultra, Feel the Game. I way overpaid for that card. That's really the only memory I have of picking it up. Just knowing that I way overpaid for it. Uh, here is the uh, Swing Kings. Yeah, Alex, anytime you, you have something that's uh, a sequel, you got to do, uh, you got to add that on. Always adds to the appeal of it. Um, here's 2007 Artifacts. I get, a, I get a little bit stranger as the stream goes on, usually. And I bump the camera more and more often as well. This is uh, SP Legendary Cuts, Destined for History. Ain't that the truth? Another product I greatly miss, SPX. This is the 150 winning materials. 
he used to have this really sweet uh, germane die card like that. Uh, had some really nice patches from the White Sox. This one I've had for seems like ages. Um, sweet spot here, 2007. So almost out of the Marlins era. And then uh, upper deck timeline where he's listed with the Tigers, but he's in the Marlins uniform. So after this, the Marlins ones kind of become fewer and farther in between. This one is really cool. I'm always for uh, unique patch windows or relic windows. So on this one, the relic window is uh, in the shape of the World Baseball Classic logo. This is 2009 Bowman Sterling. And you can see here with the, uh, the gold jersey that they're wearing, that kind of confirms my theory from before about the uh, triple threads relic that was yellow. Here's 2009 Ginter mini framed. This one's kind of plain, not my favorite. One I've had for quite some time, though. There's one that you'll like, Mike. It's got uh, Michael Young. This is from Ballpark Collection. This is actually a base card. Um, all the relics are part of the base set. So this is card 181 in the base set. They kind of do that like uh, Panini does now with NT. Here's one. Uh, I really don't know why it's these four guys. It's why there's Orioles with Tigers on this, I, I just, I don't know. Um, so you have Melvin Mora, Niggy, Verlander, and Nick Markakis, which I really do like Nick Markakis a lot, so it's kind of cool to have this card. But why those four, I, I have no idea. Um, here is a 2009 Goodwin Champions in the shape of an M. 2010 Ginter. This is one that I pack pulled myself way back in the day. So this is one of the first Cabrera cards I have. You can see it's a little bit beat up too. It's been it's been through a few moves. Uh, this is number the fifty, so it's the gold parallel. So that was cool. Uh, here it is a little plain upper deck jersey from the last release of upper deck baseball. This one was sent to me. As a gift for part of my Tigers Ultimate Team sets when I was buying a lot of those cards up um, from a guy who was on Blowout who helped me out tremendously with helping put that together. So he tossed this in, a little manufactured relic from the 2011 Tops. Here is the Ginter from 2011 Tops. I've had several of these over the years. I do like this design a lot. I think that's a good looking one. We'd like to get the autograph version of that one day. There's one that actually just got listed today. Uh, 2011 Tops Lineage, one of those one and done products, based on the 75 design. Might have that might have been one I packed pulled myself too. That's one I've had for a while. Got the uh, Heritage here, 2011 Clubhouse Collection, 62 design, sort of. Here's a really cool. Uh, all-Star Game from 2011, the diamond versions of these cards or the uh, various different sparkly ones that they have are super sweet. They just never pop up, but I would like to add one of those one day. This was a pack pulled one. Uh, 20, I think this is 2012 tops. World Champion pins. So there he is with the Marlins in his rookie season. Also one pack pulled here, 2012 tops archives. 56 tops design. Hey, what do you know? I forgot I had this. Um, this is a 2012 triple threads unity relic number to uh, 36. And I have the one of one, so maybe that's a rainbow to pursue. This is a silhouette from America's pastime. It's number 25. It's uh, not the most visually appealing card, I will say, but it was really cheap. And I, I take all Cabrera cards. I don't discriminate. So I bought it. This is one I traded for uh, back at the start of the year. Gypsy Queen Relic 2013. Here's a Tier 1 Relic. And I've had the Tigers in so many breaks of Tier 1 over the years. And I've never hit. It's a product that always beats me up. Um, and I just keep coming back. So 
I never can hit these. I usually have to go out and buy them afterwards. It's a cool dual relic from Topps Tribute 2017, I believe. No, wait. Yeah, it is. No, 2013. I'm getting ahead of myself here. And then here's a really nice shiny uh, greenish parallel with the Venezuela patch number to 35 from Tribute WBC. If you're looking for a cheap Cabrera autograph, um, the Tribute WBC ones, they're stickers, but they are pretty affordable. Yeah, I miss Lineage. That was a fun product. That was, I really do uh, did enjoy that. Here's a 2013 update series. This is the uh, silk-ish type of thing, commemorative uh, rookie card patches. So this manufactured these as a manufactured hit in 2013 tops update. It ain't immaculate. It ain't me. Uh, here he is with the Marlins, although you can't really tell because of lack of licensing. Immaculate hitters. This is one I got the national last year for like two dollars. It's got. Nice little ass tape finish on the front. Immaculate swatches. Franchise insert from NT. 2014 update. Commemorative patch out of the blasters. Here's the uh, chrome update. All-star stitches. This one's got a really nice shine on it. Jeremy IPTTM actually hooked me up with that one, so shout out to him there. 2014 Tops Mini Relic. This is one you don't see too often. Here's the regular version of that All Star Stitches card that Jeremy also hooked me up with. This one is uh, back to back jacks, back to back like Jordan 96 97 with Evan Longoria, one of my favorite non Tigers. So it's cool to have that. This one I got at my uh, first card show I set up at 2015 Diamond Kings Portraits. Convert it to 99. I think it's like the hollow foil or something on that. I don't know. Not too much more to uh, to go. Yeah, let's let's pour one out for the national. Wish it was happening. Um, Dustin Dillinger actually hooked me up with one of these two. So thank you to him. Two different career high relics. One of these is series one. The other one is series two. Here's a 15 Ginter. I do not like the Ginter full size relics. Um, I would much prefer the mini framed ones. I was disappointed when they started doing that. Momentous material, big old jersey swatch there. Copper parallel museum collection. Getting into more of the 2015s here. Opening day stars. Not an easy card to pull. Here's an interesting one. It's a tribute relic. Um, it's got these two pinstripes on it, so I don't really know what it's from. It probably is the Detroit Stars jersey, but could be wrong. Dustin and Blake hooked me up with that one. Thank you to those guys. Here's the MLB debut medallion. I think that's one of those uh, commemorative ones. Um, that you get in the jumbo boxes. Thank you. This is a uh, some new pickup today, which is kind of the inspiration. And those back pages, if he's watching, shout out to him. He did his uh, trout rummage slash Chris, Chris Bryant. That was also somewhat of a Bryce Harper rummage um, earlier today. And I was watching it right before I went live and said, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and do my own rummage today." Here's a Strata one that's got a really cool uh, – it's got that thing where you can look up a game. I think this was also a game where he hit a home run, or at least I'll just tell myself that to make myself feel better um, because he probably went like 0 for 4 or something. Here's a Tier 1. This is a dual relic. This one is numbered to 50. Here's a uh, NT Colossal. I like the image on this one even though – you know, no logos, but I've always been a Panini fan for baseball. This is the uh, Jackie Robinson Day commemorative uh, relic. Love Jackie Robinson. And love getting the uh, Cabrera cards. I think that was a blaster, bo blaster box excuse me, exclusive. Just a standard relic, Series 1 tops. 
Here's a tougher one to find. Major League Milestones, 1,500 career RBI. Number two, 100. I do, Rick. Um, it is a, it's, an, it's an obsession. <laughs> uh, this is a manufactured one. If I do more rummages like this, they will probably not be this long um, because the relics are probably one of the deeper parts of the collection. Here's a 2017 Ginter. My relic bucket list, that's a good question. I would say finishing the rainbow on this one now. Uh, really any triple threads ones, any of the booklets, kind of like this one right here. A lot of times the booklets are autographed, so it's you don't always find those. But I mean, those types of cards, you just have to kind of get lucky. Um, here's a meaningful material, the 50 museum. What's going on, Nats man? Yeah. <laughs> here's the uh, Hank Aaron Award. This was a card for the longest time I could not find at a reasonable price. Um, and one day I found it at the Fort Wayne show, just kind of on a whim. So that's 2017. I've got the 2018 and newer relics, and then we're going to be done. You know, I appreciate it. My good buddy Andy, if he's in here, uh, referred to me or referred me to your channel. Um, the other day, so I'm gonna have to check you out here. And then I need to the past couple of days, gotta get caught up. All right, 2018. I don't have too much more to go here. Um, this is an NT relic, this is technically the base card from NT, but I don't have regular base in that anymore for baseball. Uh, this is major league material, kind of the same deal as that career one, career day, or I forget what it was called. Um, career high, that's it. So series one and series two. Oops. Hopefully that was the last time that happens. Uh, these were sent to me as part of a secret Santa in the Tigers Collectors Group on um, the Facebook. So I got that one. And I got the blue, which the blue is pretty sweet. I do like that one a lot. Mike, I will send you a uh, signed index card. <laughs> uh, I'll show you guys my storage system here in a second. I'll probably do it. 2018 tops, Alan and Ginter. Once I put these back, I can uh, show it a little bit better. 2018 Heritage. It's 2018 Holiday. Uh, tier one. Cards of Giants hooked me up with this one here, number 27. And I got this one to 36. Can't remember which one of these it was. I've got it written down somewhere. But he hooked me up with one of those two. Uh, here's another triple threads. 5 RBI, 15X. I believe that's 15 times that he's had a 5 RBI performance. You can see that there on the back. Only Pujols and Cano have more. Last of the 2018s, these are from Updates. This is the commemorative postseason patch. Uh, this one's a red to 25. Yeah, Ginter is cool. I just, those full-size ones, I don't know what it is. I just, I like the mini relics so much more. I don't think he's had any for quite a few years now. All right, heading down the home stretch here, 2019 and 2020 coming up here to wrap it up. This is the uh, Don Russ Retro 85. This was really, really cheap on uh, CUMC because it's got a ding corner down here, so it was like a dollar. So I, I grabbed that, no question. Uh, this one is, if it ain't immaculate, it ain't me, to 49. Red. This one I overpaid on. Uh, I've got a funny story. It's not so funny to me. But it's, uh, this is also considered the base from NT last year, number to 99. Colossal to 49. And the same card, bat version. This is the hollow gold, numbered at 225. 
150 years commemorative patch. Here's the 84 style relic, which really a big fan of because, well, that was the year Tigers won the World Series last. This one was pulled for me in a break by, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, pulled for me in a break by Megan TT Hobbies. So shout out to her. Uh, the funny story on that one basically is uh, the Tigers group, um, they do a Sunday night auction every week. And if I see a Cabrera card that I really want to get, I will go ahead and jump in. Uh, but the thing is, is that people usually bid them up to like dumb amounts. Like there was this card that was numbered to nine that was put up about a month ago uh, when I got that NT relic and it got bid up to 40 bucks or something for one that was numbered to nine. I paid like 65 for this one. So it was just a standard relic. Probably should have been like a $20 card at most. And that's being a little generous. Um, so what happened with it is that I got, I was mad that it got up to $40. So I said, well, uh, these guys want it so bad. I'm just going to run them up so that later on they're going to be all spent out when I you know, go to bid on the stuff that I also would really like to win. So I bid that card up and I thought for sure this guy was going to go to $15 max on his bid. Uh, but then he left me hanging at $14, which was a lot more than I wanted to pay. So I, I ended up paying $14 for it. That's probably just a couple dollar relic. But So uh, he that guy got the better of me that night. He also won that card for $40, that uh, relic I really wanted. So what was I a jerk? Yes. Did I deserve it? Also, yes. But now I have the story to go along with it. Um, here's a one, here's one with Castellanos, green to 99. That one was a gift. And then this one I bought out of a uh, lot. No, I took it out of my inventory, um, number to 50. Here's one also number to 50 from Tribute. Purple there. Uh, this one is the single jumbo relic, numbered to 36 from Triple Threads. And then this one as well. So this one has a story with it too. Um, the story on this one is that I offered $5 for this because the guy who pulled it out of his box got a Acuna Jumbo Patch Auto to 75, or it's the Jumbo Relic, I forget what they're called, out of his box. And then he got the Master Case Hit Triple Relic Autograph that had like Keston Hyera, Vlad Jr., and like Kevin Biggio or something like that on it. Maybe it was Yelich instead of Biggio. I don't remember. It was numbered. It was a Sapphire, so it was like two of three or something. And this was one of his two relics that he hit. So I asked him, hey, will you take $5 for it? And he said, yeah. So um, that was the story behind that card. That was at the Fort Wayne show. This one was given to me at the Fort Wayne show by my friend Stealing Second Sean. He hooked me up with that one. Got Castellanos and Cecil Fielder with it. And finally, getting into 2020, only a few so far this year. Here's the Don Russ Retro 86 one. Here is uh, the Global Game Manufactured. And last but not least, the opening day that was given to me by Hitman 23, which that's a very tough pull on those opening day relics. So. I will uh, show you guys my storage here real quick. It's kind of messy over in this area, so apologies for that. So for the relics, what I do, you can see here I have this uh, case, sort of, and I'm sorry if it sounds bad right now. I'm holding my camera. Oh, that's all right, Jesse, no problem. Um, I will I will archive this, so if you guys want to go back and watch it, you can, or if you missed something. I do appreciate him uh, stopping by, and I appreciate all you guys stopping by and hanging out with me while I do this. It was a lot more fun to do it this way than recording it. So this is kind of how I do it here. And that last one on the right is kind of the uh, the thick cards that can't go in the Z-folio that I put into one touches or any of the rare inserts. So, again, this was uh, prompted today by... Uh, 
the Ruby one of one that I got in, which is number 2311 in my collection, one of one number 28. Only the second one of one I have from his Triple Crown here, the other one being this one here. So I would like to get more of these at some point, uh, preferably an autograph at some point too, but I know that's going to cost me an arm and a leg to get, and I can't afford to give up an arm and a leg at the moment, um, but one day. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Almost an hour on this one. That's not too bad. I thought this might go a little longer, but thank you uh, so much for hanging out if you hung out. And if uh, you watch the archive version, thank you so much for that as well. But have a good night, guys. I will uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime. See you then. Take care.